Uh, right then, how did you see in your 40th? Big holiday, perhaps, maybe, a party? Uh, did you do that thing where you compile a list of really fun things to do over the year, you know, like a bungee jump, and you go about and tick each one of them off? Well, for one lady in this county, Charity is the name of her birthday. This is Angela D'Souza, who has set herself a huge task of raising £40,000 to adopt an entire village in Kenya. Angela is also the founder of King's Daughter uh, and also runs a women's business group as well. Set up to encourage women with a number of areas in their life. Uh, pleased to say that Andrea is actually with me now. Hello to you. Hello, kid. Forty thousand pounds. I know. What's that thinking? <laughs> that is a huge target. Talk to us about how this all came about. Well, on my 39th birthday, I decided that forty had to be big, and um, I'm a bit of a visionary, so I do tend to buy stuff more than I can chew. Usually, that's quite normal for me. <laughs> so I thought it had to be a forty. The number that I was going to raise, it had to be something to do with 40, so 40,000 was the number that came to mind. <laughs> right. Did that scare you at all, to think I've got to raise 40,000? It didn't scare me, no, that's half my problem. <laughs> um, but it has proven to be much more difficult than I thought it would be. So, But I'm, I'm not going to give up, I'll keep trying, and we will get this village built, and it will happen, maybe not in the time scale that I would like it to have happened. But it will happen. But that's okay, because mm. you're fundraising, you're doing something amazing. Yeah. As long as it gets done, I suppose, is the yes. ethos behind yes. this. Uh, in terms of why, you know, a, a village over in, in Kenya, as you mentioned, uh, how did that idea come about? Um, it's a combination of things, but I have lived in Africa for several years, and um, I have seen and even experienced to a certain degree poverty, but I've seen what real poverty is. And I think it's something that most people in this country don't understand. It, we are so well looked after in the UK, and most people don't really understand poverty. And also, they've been desensitized, I think. There's so much going on um, on TV and radio and everything about you know, poor people in Africa, etc. And and yet, to me, it, it became very real about 18 months ago when I started to remember things that I'd forgotten and felt, I felt um, almost ashamed that I had allowed myself to forget that there were people out there that were needy. Um, and um, so I, I knew I wanted to do something, and I knew I was, um, I'm in business for a reason. It's not just so that I can build my own bank balance, but I've always determined to make money and do good with it. And the village idea, I, I guess it came about because um, there are many sponsorship programs out there. And and I've met people that have grown up um, in villages where they have sponsorship. But I, I've known people that were not sponsored. And they described it from their perspective of sitting next to a child that was sponsored. And sadly, many of the children that are sponsored more often than not, they don't need the sponsorship. They're just connected. They know the right people, that sort of thing. It's not always the case, but that does happen. So I thought I'd like to do something where it's equal opportunities. Everybody gets the same. They get treated fairly. The other thing I wanted to do was build a community that could take care of itself, you know, teach a man to fish rather than give him a fish, that uh, sort of thing. And I just thought, I want to do something. I'm 40, you know, half my life is gone. I need to leave my mark on this planet. And, and it's just, it's really important to me that my life counts for something. Mm. So it's a combination of all these things. So how can you, when I say follow the money up, if you raise the 40,000, how do you then turn that into a, a sustainable village over there? How can you be responsible for that? Does it go through somebody else's hands afterwards, or how does it work? Well, I'm in partnership with Kenyans, so, and I know that every penny will go to the project. There's no admin fees, there's no fees. We take the money. I give it to a UK-based charity who have... Um, uh, things in Kenya that they're already doing. They have people on the ground in Kenya, and I can follow it penny for penny, you know, um, and, and see it. We're going to photograph every step of the way. We've already photographed the land, just green, <laughs> trees and grass. <laughs> and, you know, every time something happens, we will blog on, on the King's Daughters blog. We will blog, uh, take photos, put the financial value, this is how much it costs, you know, be completely accountable.
Mm. Uh, well, one person who, of course, uh, was he really struck a chord with um, with your 40th birthday idea uh, was Laura Kelly, who's a local photographer in Gloucestershire. Um, and Laura's actually with us now. And uh, Laura, hello to you. I mean, in terms of you and your business, you know, you're donating quite a lot of, of your profits to this cause. What was it that kind of struck a note with you? Uh, well, I've been involved in King's Daughters since it started um, quite a few years ago. Um, um, sometimes I do refer to myself as their official photographer, as I pretty much photograph everything that they do. Um, so to support this just came naturally, I think. And um, in my business, I want to know that um, what I'm doing is making some kind of difference. And so this was a very, it was very easy to get involved. And um, it is something also that I can be passionate about. And I know where the money is going. And so it's easy to support it. And um, I thought by donating half of what I, half the profits from family photographs, I like the idea of um, families in the UK um, capturing their memories, you know, but at the same time helping another family across the world. Mm. No, absolutely. And I, and I mean, I've got to mention, obviously, hearing the both of you talk and hearing your accents as well. I know you live here in the county. Obviously not born and bred in Gloucestershire, are you? I was born in Crawley, but I grew up in South Africa. Right. So, hence the accent. Laura was born yeah. in South Africa, though. Spent the first time part of my life there, yeah. So you do, I mean, as you mentioned, you've been over there, you've lived it, you've seen it, which of course, as you say, does have this huge impact on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. In terms then of how you've gone about trying to raise this money, £40,000, you know, I have to, I've, I've, I hear many people doing charity work on this show, lots of people raising money. This is a huge target. So how's it gone so far? <laughs> it hasn't gone as well as I'd hoped. And one of the things I've noticed, and I hope to be proven wrong at the end of this, but most of the money has come from Africans and from people that have little. And I really wanted the money to come from people that had a lot or people that it wouldn't hurt. Unfortunately, so far, and like I say, I want to be wrong in this, but so far it's the people with little that have given the most. And I'd say 80% of the money has come from Africans. So. We need to get England involved. We need to get Gloucestershire involved. You know, I want to proudly say that this is what we've done. Um, it, it is a huge number, but I've seen so many people struggle to raise small amounts of money, and I thought, there's so much money in this country. We are so blessed in this country. We have so much, and we can give, and it won't even hurt us. How then do you, because uh, I, I know you're, you're running a party today, because obviously, you know, it can be quite p different, difficult. A lot of people are thinking it's right before Christmas. Mm. Um, you know, it's, sometimes it can be hard. We give to other charities. And, but you are doing a 1920s party, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, which is obviously an opportunity for people to go out and enjoy themselves as well. Tell us about this. Well, the party was just an excuse to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the real reason. It is my birthday after all. And I wanted to have this big party. It was just an excuse to have a great time. But at the same time, it makes it count for something. So we've got the best band in the country, 1920s band, coming down from Manchester to play for us. We've got um, um, dancers, the, I think they're called the Flaming Feathers, and they're coming to teach us how to do the Charleston. They will, oh, fantastic. They will take care of all the dancing at the party so that, you know, we, we're just going to have a fantastic time. So one thing I found was people are passionate about the party. They want to come to the party, which is why I set the, the price so high to come, because it needed to be about the cause, not about the party. And so it did kind of um, put some people off, but I needed to make it make sure that people knew that this is a fundraiser, but we are going to have a great time raising the funds. I also intend to have lots of games and fundraising activities and raffles and you know, anything at the party. So hopefully we can really push that number up at the party. And um, yeah, we'll just take it from there. And I suppose, as I say, will you continue now until you hit that big 40 Absolutely. Thousand? I am stubborn enough not to go. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> How can people get in contact with you then? Um, the best thing to do is to go directly to the event page, which is angelas40th.eventbrite.co.uk. Angelas40th. Dot Eventbrite. Eventbrite.co.uk. Yeah, it's Eventbrite, B R I T E. B R I T E, yep. Okay. Dot UK. And that has all the information about the party. It has links to informa you know, the, the project, and it also it has the donation and the booking link. So everything is pretty much in there. 
um, they can get in touch with me through that as well because I'm the event organiser, so they just click contact organiser. Fantastic. So for best of luck, do let us know how it continues because, Thank of course, you. it would be great to hear from you that, you know, you did reach that 40,000 yes. pound mark. Well, well. Uh, so we'd love to hear more. And I do have to say, I mean, you know, in talking charity, in talking helping others, um, fighting for others as well, one man who, of course, has been in the press a lot after his passing, Nelson Mandela, who, you know, did so much of that. For the pair of you, I mean, how did you both feel when you heard of his, his death recently? It wasn't a shock, obviously. He was... An, an old man and it was his time to go but it really you know he's such an inspiration there are times when I felt sorry for myself and just thought you know what Mandela wouldn't have done this month <laughs> you know he just he's just an amazing man and sadly growing up in South Africa in the apartheid era and um, we, we were taught to be against him we were taught he was a bad man we were we were taught not to vote when in, you know in um, the time when when the elections came when he came into power and looking back it's such a pity that we weren't given better information you know we could have been more supportive I definitely would have voted differently knowing what I know now but no he was a good man he led a great life and it, it was sad but it, it was his time mm. and Laura what about you I mean obviously being born over there but coming over here did it have much of an effect on your life um, well, to be quite honest, I almost feel kind of dif uh, different. Um, I'm not 